Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we are discussing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Reference 25940OK, better known as the Rose Gold Rubber Clad. Now you can see and you can purchase this watch on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, yep, this one, if you enjoy these videos. And please click on that card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during the video to see our full sales listing for this watch with accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details. Now, the watch on my wrist is fairly burying my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Although 42 millimeters in diameter, the watch wears considerably larger. Now, 42 is the distance across the round of the case, not including the chronograph pushers, the crown, or the crown guards. It's actually not as thick as it appears, 15 millimeters, but because the case flank is completely sheer, it appears like it absolutely towers over the wrist with a 90 degree break between the plane of the wrist and the flank of the case. It's more dramatic than it actually is. The defining measurement of this watch that makes it look and feel huge is the 54 millimeter lug to lug span horizontally across the wrist. And if you actually measure it from the plots, these intermediate links that join the strap to the lugs, you have a rigid most inflexible outcropping span of 58 millimeters between points that cannot be bent any tighter. So the watch really does approach 60 millimeters across the wrist and it weighs an absolute ton. It is very impressive and that's one of the benefits of a huge case and a bezel that, although rubber clad, is always built to correspond to the metal of the case. On these rubber clads, a rose gold case means a rubber coated rose gold bezel. They always match and the case back itself is a solid block of gold. Now the strap, however, is quite pliant and comfortable. These diver style straps debuted on the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak scubas and divers and over time they became a popular option with Royal Oak chronograph owners because they're more flexible and pliant than the hornback leather which is to say they're easier to bend around a small wrist so if you're going to wear this watch on a wrist like mine 16 centimeters or thereabouts this is the strap you want, flexible and comfortable. It's a perfect match for the watch, because frankly, what good is 100 meter water resistance when you've got the watch on a $500 leather strap? Not much, this gives you flexibility figuratively and literally, and it's matched with a beautifully polished and suitably massive rose gold AP logo inset deployant buckle. The nice thing about this is, in addition to being beautiful, substantial, and quite valuable in its own right, it provides a little bit of a counterbalance to the watch when it's on your wrist, the heft of the buckle underneath allowing you to wear the watch looser without fear of it porpoising or capsizing on your wrist. This is an Audemars Piguet, however, so the finish and the work on the metal in every respect is spectacular. You can see the polished bevels at the edges of the plots gleaming through. You can see the hand laid and tapered bevel along the flank of the case separating the satin finish of the lug top from the satin finish of the case band. And you'll note a beautiful horizontal satin across the case band. It's hard to see on the rubber clad model but the bezel gasket is fully expressed whereas it's only hinted at on a standard Royal Oak. Here it's part of the layered design of the case and you can see that it flares out underneath the rubber clad with a slightly different rubber tone. The watch has a massive assembly of gold, steel, and rubber acting as the bezel. Octagonal in the tradition of every Royal Oak, back to Gerald Genta's 1972 prototype. On the rubber clad, as I mentioned, it's rubber, natural vulcanized, and quite durable over rose gold. Unlike the standard Royal Oak, which uses white gold bezel bolts, these hex bolts are in fact steel, and the contrast is spectacular. I also want to be completely honest about the condition of the rubber clad bezel cladding. In this case, a pre-owned watch, it's a little bit non-standard. There are some small marks, and I want to be completely honest and upfront about those, because Pre-owned watches are never the same from example to example. We don't use stock photos on our website, and I don't want a stock portrayal of the watch as representative of the class, because this is the exact model we're selling, so I want you to know precisely what you're getting. Now, you'll note inboard of the bezel, which I would rate as an 8 of 10 in terms of condition, you can see Audemars Piguet has gone with a judicious grayscale treatment across the dial. There is a brushed metallic tachymetric scale acting as a ray halt that slopes down from the edge of the bezel to the inner dial. And the dial itself is the so-called mega tapisserie that characterizes the Royal Oak offshores with a large textured hobnail pattern. You'll note the white of the print and the numerals. You'll note the black of the sub-registers and that gorgeous 
charcoal or anthracite gray across the dial itself. Like I said, it's a very judiciously chosen grayscale treatment that runs the full gamut from white to black and everything in between. The details are phenomenal. Now the watch is beautifully luminescent at night with the Arabic numerals themselves and those gorgeous luminescent inset rose gold hands at center making the watch a cinch to read. Underneath that massive solid gold case back which weighs about two ounces by itself, there is an automatic winding Audemars Piguet caliber 2326 with a 2840 module. What is it? Well, it's a Gisher LeCoultre caliber tied to a Dubois de Praz vertical clutch chronograph module, which is to say, it's a lot of high horology content and absolutely worthy of its canister. Now, the JLC movement is a true thoroughbred. Free sprung with ceramic rotor bearings and unidirectional winding, the 2326 model is upgraded over Audemars' earlier 2226 model. The version you have in the rubber clad this particular generation mid F series featuring the free sprung balance, the unidirectional winding, the unlubricated high efficiency ceramic rotor bearings, and the double laser welded hairspring for exceptional stability in the face of shock, as well as better timekeeping in general. Now it's paired with a vertical clutch chronograph module, which means you can simply leave the chronograph running with the vertical clutch. There's no additional hazard to the movement. Moreover, you'll note how smoothly the chronograph seconds hand starts. There's absolutely no jump or stagger with a vertical clutch. The watch does feature hacking seconds, so pull the crown, stop the balance, now you can synchronize the watch to a reference time. It also features a quick set for the date beneath its magnifier, so you can rapidly cycle the date should it run down or encounter an irregular length month. You too can go rubber clad. See it and buy it on our website.